Hey, 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 my name is Polish Links, and welcome to Chronotopia from Trauma and Uh It's a demo for now, so let's check this out. Why not? Why not? How did it all begin? Before my eyes was the most beautiful landscape one could imagine. A vast and indefinite blue sky, a bright sky with hints of clouds. I could never have dreamed of a better place to adore my last moments. To be honest, it would almost be a waste. The light is so bright, so powerful, that it is making me fade away. Something strands of hair obscure my eyes from time to time. My wave makes me fall lower and lower, again and again, lower and lower and lower. Is it me or is it a text that we got through? It's like getting into the background a bit. Well, not in the background, but into the back. And the one that it just appeared is like more in front. That's probably the thing. Yeah, I'm drowning in this vast and fickle landscape. But bit by bit, I'm getting lost in my confusing thoughts. My whole being is growing dumb. And it's not that I don't like it. I actually like that idea. I'm like straw at the whim of the wind, taken far away by it. What I was is fading away. My memories, what defines me, disappear. To be honest, as my body approaches the ground, as I am bracing for impact, nothing matters anymore. I would like to say I'm afraid, yet I do not feel anything anymore. All I know is that I do not deserve what is up there. I'm not worthy of flying. While my corporeal being shatters into pieces, my mind keeps moving. Particles flow over all over my stiff and heavy body. Everything is getting dark and silent. Uh, I do not know where I'm going, but I know that this is where I belong. There lies my punishment. I'm going back to original darkness. That sounds damn interesting. How can I even be forgiven? A rustling sound woke me up. My eyes opened by themselves, almost against my will, to reveal a blurry and grey world. Confused, I tried to move my body. Yet, all of a sudden, it had become so heavy that it would not answer me. After some time, minute, uh, some time, God damn it! I'm so used to saying after some time. That I even say it if, if so, even if something else is written. Well, whatever. After some long minutes of struggling with myself, I eventually managed to move my fingertips. Still, something was holding me back. Suddenly I realized that I was not lying on my bed. That I was not waking up from a long and comfortable night. I opened my eyes wide. The rustling, okay. I was standing up, heading against the wall by some plants hanging at my lips. A soft vegetal wall enveloped me wholly in some sort of protective and comfortable cocoon. What? Cocoon? Huh. I pulled at the plants a bit and tore them apart. With my hands, obviously, eventually freeing myself entirely. I could not say, stay here. I had to get out. Hmm, what is this thing? You know, in the background here. The lines appear around it, okay. The thermit appears the membrane and dove into the unknown. I found myself in a gigantic temple, plunged in two lines. Pale lunar rays passed through from above the vault, which allowed my eyes to get used to the darkness, so I could finally see what the knight was hiding inside the building. All around me, there were dozens and dozens of cocoons, just like mine, lying around quietly. However, only you are the you were the only one that decided to go out, huh? 
well, maybe not decided, but you know, went out basically. This terrified drew closer to the nearest one and took a look through the shiny and translucent membrane. There was someone inside, a sleeping human being. I was deeply unsettled by this discovery. Despite my num numb mouth and haze mind, it was clear to me those poor souls were being held captive against their will and I knew I had to free them. Okay, I guess I would assume the same thing. As I was ready to tear the plants around the cocoon of the unknown woman, I heard a bell tingling behind me. I turned around. A strange figure was standing a few yards from me. A man or woman leaning on a cane, wearing a long robe back into a mox, with their eyes covered by a black blindfold. Hello? Who are you? And what is this place? His advance wearing the apparition simply gestured for me to come closer. I stood still for a moment. I don't think I trust her. After all, I did not know who they were, so I had no reason to trust them. Well, th that is an apparition of a witch, I guess. Or just an old lady. But it was also the only human being who could tell me what I was doing here, in such an enigmatic place. Could I hope to find an answer without their help? As I stood there, motionless and mistrustful, the person stretched a hand towards me, I sighed. In the end, this blind person appeared quite innocuous to me. Had they wanted to curse me, they would have tried to do so earlier. Okay, so also blind. Suspicious yet determined, I held their hand and answered their call. Then they took me through the temple in silence. To my surprise, there were a lot more rooms like the one I woke up in, all filled with cocoons. This strange and dreamlike sight sparked my curiosity just as much as it confused me. Where exactly are we? Why are there plants all around us? Why are there people sleeping in those cocoons? But my companion stayed silent and simply took me to the exits, which upset me more than anything. At least tell me your name? Eventually I reached outside. Okay, there's some village. All I could see in front of me was a desert filled with ruins. Okay, there is ruins, not village. Luxurious plants covered <coughs> ragged buildings, yet the atmosphere was far too dry. Bursts of wind blew over the moody ground, making whirlwinds of dust float up in the air. In the sky, a giant moon seemed to watch over this mysterious landscape. Okay, there is moon, there is moon. When the clouds move, we can see it. Strangely enough, I felt anxious, like I had come back to a familiar place, somewhere deep inside my heart, a place I would have rather forgotten all about. Looks nice. Whoa, my temper guide made me emerge from my torpor by releasing my hand and bowing down before me. Wait! You already get a chance to hold them back. They vanished into the depths of the temple. At the same time, a group of young women came out of one of the buildings and noticed me. They ran to me straight away, laughing. Oh, you just woke up! You must be a new shadow! What's your dream? What's your dream? Tell us! Hey, don't be so pushy! That poor soul must feel so lost right now! But it's the first time I've ever met a newborn. I'm curious. I don't know the kind of thing they could have seen. Uh, I don't have the slightest idea what you are talking about. Exactly my fault. Where are we? What is this place? Why are there people sleeping by there? Don't worry, don't worry. We're going to explain everything to you. But first you must tell us your dream. My dream. But... You know, if you tell someone a dream, it won't come true, usually, right? At least that's what we live here, kind of. Was it only a dream? I don't know anymore. I was cradled by the plants. It was dark, and I had to get through them. But what happened before that? Before that? I think I was in the sky. A deep azure sky. But that's the only thing I remember. Well, there's not a lot to talk about. 
If a newborn affirms he doesn't remember the dream, he must be a wavering shadow. We must take them to Liz as soon as possible. So far, all the people we met were shadows. You're right, it's time to admit that you should hurry and find his dream. Liz, limited time. What's the meaning of this? What is going to happen to me? That's simple, we're going to take you to the wise woman of the village. She's the most knowledgeable person around. She'll know how to help you. Ow! Mm. Hit my finger in the keyboard. Absolutely, and she will explain the whole thing far better than us. My head was a real mess. I had no idea what was happening. So far no human I had met appeared harmful, but nothing made any sort of sense. So I lazily let my new friends guide me through their ruins. We met other people along the way, men and women of all ages, wearing white and rather warm clothes, which were probably shielding them from the wind and the dryness. Some of them were chanting on a doorstep, others were building some terracotta houses, and some were pulling carts laden with tools. One could have thought it was an ordinary village, if not for this peculiar and unspeakable feeling. It felt like these people were not entirely real, like this hamlet was in fact just full of shadows. Yeah, exactly what I said. So far all the people we met were like shadows actually, and not you were the one. <sighs> okay, eventually the young woman stopped before a campfire. A small group was surrounding the fireplace. Move, move away. It's important that we see Liz, right? <coughs> right now! It's true, we may have found a wavering shadow. As soon as she had spoken, another voice sharp yet soft answered. Let me see. The villagers moved aside in a flash. Then I saw her. Hello. A young woman stood straight amidst the crowd, full of confidence. She was wearing a pure white dress that contrasted with the grey and dirty air. With a bright red cloak on her shoulder, she shook her brown hair and smiled mysteriously. Her piercing eyes saw right through my flesh. Whoa! As if she had put a finger over my heart, a sharp pain ran through my stomach and my skull. Her eyes reminded me of the sky, a grey azure sky, and the coldness of the ground when my gut spilled onto the floor. I was falling, I was drowning, I was going to hit the floor. I was only fate's toy, a thing without a will. Yes, that was my dream, a fall. But was it really a dream? The wind blowing in my hair felt so real, the light so bright. And before that, before falling, I was on a lighthouse's promontory. I was watching over the landscape from the top of the tower. The air was fresh, just warm enough, and the sun was caressing my skin. But despite all that, I jumped. I was the one who did it. I killed myself? But why? I do not know. I do not remember why I did it. Hmm. When I finally came back to my senses, the young woman was staring at me with a large smile. large smile you say <laughs> okay let's say that's a large smile you just got a piece of memory back right who 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 who, who are you uh, how stupid me I did not introduce myself where are my manners well so far no one really introduced themselves so it's not really a problem my name is Liz I'm the villagers wise woman and I'm going to be with you during the inner journey you're going to make in the following days don't get it at all. What I'm doing here? What is this place? Don't worry, don't worry. My job is also to tell you about the rules of this world. Let me begin with an overview of what's going on. Then you can ask me anything you want. Is that alright with you? Well, it's not like I have much of a choice, do I? Subject personality. Deeply pessimistic. I see, I see. <laughs> ah, okay. 
Then, if this discovery is going to be, go on, ask me anything on your mind right now. Where are we? What exactly is a shadow? Can I ask both both of these questions? Alright, this is the safe area. So this time I will probably don't forget about doing that. Uh, what do I want to know more? Where are we? Or what exactly is a shadow? Where are we? Well, even if we will know where are we, will that actually help? I mean... I don't think that would... That would be of any help to him on... On... Uh, understanding anything about his past or anything. What exactly is a shadow? Or maybe where are we would actually help? Maybe this place has some connection with the dream or so on. But I want to actually ask what is exactly a what exactly is a shadow somehow. By nature, a shadow's existence is cryptic. You wake up some day in the temple. You use your time as you see fit. Then one day you go back to sleep without an explanation. Wow. That's what we call being born and dying, but that's not really the best way to describe it because you can wake up multiple times or sleep forever. Okay. Got it. So you can go to sleep for a very long time. It's a tradition for each shadow to be given a name based on the dreams that they had while they were sleeping in their cocoon. It is said that those dreams are in fact memories from your previous life. Uh, so maybe actually asking about the place was a better idea. Well, we'll see. Your presence here is some sort of transition. If, wait, did I skip the text? No. Your presence here is some sort of transition. If you manage to put your previous life behind you, you will be able to come back to life and have a second chance. If not, you will be stuck here. Does this mean I'm dead? Probably. It's not how we picture the afterlife, right? Well, at least he knows there is some afterlife, right? <laughs> I guess that's good. Well, let's say it's rather surprising. I suppose it would be better if you one knew the basics of metapsychosis beforehand, but it is not very common. Strangely enough, as long as we are alive, we never worry too much about what comes after. Rebirth and transmigration of souls. These concepts seem to, so distant to us. And when it is time to die, nobody is ever ready. Well, what exactly happens during a shadow's birth? What is going to happen to me? Ah, uh, that is quite simple. The village council will gather to give you a name, and will let you live amongst our tribe until the next time you are called to sleep. If you wake up once again in the future, we'll give you a new name, and so forth. Okay, I want to ask the question if if I were basically woken up in the past. That's it. Okay, that's your question. Mm, most of it. That's the usual process when someone wakes up with clear memories of their dream at least. Sometimes a shadow only has partial or plural memories, so we can't give them a proper name. That's what wavering shadows are, people stuck between worlds, whose flame could vanish at any moment. Oh, so I can answer, eh, uh, answer, oh my god, I can actually ask that other question as, as well, where are we? Right now we are in the timeless space which doesn't have a real name, but you can think of it as a purgatory. In this world the night is eternal, you will never see the sun, there is no one to the moor, wherever you go. Hmm. Night for all the time, huh? Would I mind something like that? Hmm. Maybe not. Or maybe yes. Don't know really. That's actually a hard thing to think about right now. So let's continue this story. 
Nobody knows if it leads anywhere at all. Nobody knows where these ruins come from. And nobody knows why we are the only ones wandering here. Hmm. Here comes my idea. If what he mentioned before was true, so he killed himself. So basically, basically suicide. Maybe that's a place for people who commit suicide. Just a theory, we'll see. But we do know that we are not living beings. We don't need to eat or drink, much less sleep. <gasps> what? But I I kind of like it to eat and you know, drink like tea. And I freaking love to sleep, so oh my god, this is hell. Okay, we're just here. By the way, that's the reason we've called ourselves shadows. Okay, safe. Safe, thank you. Why are... Waver... Uh, wait, that's a W, right? Why are wavering shadows different from the others? What, uh, what happens when shadows don't recall their dream? Uh, okay, this one. I couldn't help but gulp as I waited for the answer. The Wavering Shadow is locked in the Purification Hall for several days so they can meditate and get rid of the mist in their mind. After those few days, if they manage to get their members back, they will have the right to join us. However, if they fail, for whatever reason, they are denied. Can you lie about that? The Wavering Shadows who fail to overcome this trial are cursed. You will lose the ability to see as well as the ability to talk. <gasps> Like, like the one that took us out of the cocoon area? Well, like, wait, the temple, okay. There's only one way to atone for sins. To become one of the temple's priests. Okay, got it. Like the person I met when I woke up. They were blindfolded and wouldn't speak to me. They were indeed a priest, so they could not answer you. I get it now, I believe. Press watch over the temple. This is where most of the shadows wake up and where the faded shadows come to sleep. So you don't do anything special to keep them asleep? Not at all. Wait, did you blush? Yes, you blushed. Actually, the shadows who are on the verge of fading are irremediably drawn to this place and go stand next to the walls by themselves. Then plants grow little by little over their bodies and cover them. You can consider your cocoon an extension of your body. Okay. But that's disgusting. I find this rather poetic, you know? Anyway. The priests lost their existence and now spend their lives serving the community. Some patrol all around the world and try to find shadows who wake up in other places. That is a noble mission, yet a lonely one. Uh, but would it be? Wouldn't that actually be hard to do when you can't see a thing? To look for everything. I mean, sure, your other senses are stronger than. Well, maybe they are able to sense presence. There is no other way to save wavering shadows. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I like the expression. You see, some time ago, we would simply throw them into the purification hall, waiting for them to overcome their trial by themselves. When I came here, I offered to help Wavering Shadows recall their past lives using a method called a method named Memotherapy. That's the reason why those girls brought you to me. I'm scared. <laughs> and I am curious. Uh, what happens when... Oh, that's the same questions again. Okay, why are Wavering Shadows different from the others? I can't tell you why some people have it easier than the others when it comes to remembering their dreams, but I have my own theory. In my opinion, it's all a matter of individuality. Not everyone is ready to put things behind them, especially if they have lived a hectic life. There's also a high rate of Wavering Shadows amongst those who kill themselves. Okay, so that's not place only for suicide people, for people who commit suicide. 
but also basically deaths. But the wavering shadows, the wavering shadows. So people who committed suicide are more more likely to okay, got it, to become ones. I imagine it's because they arrive here with the will to forget. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we ask the question: What is mnemotherapy? Mnemotherapy. Mnemotherapy. I think I know that. The whole process simply involves analogy. Yes. Let's say if in translation into my language, it's what I think it is. Probably is what I think. Well, let's well let's wait for her explanation. Actually, I just tell stories that involve universal themes suited to my interlocutor's personality. Then they have to draw parallels with their past life by themselves. My method might appear challenging to you, but it does help stimulate the memory. Okay, so all I have to do is listen to you and react when something seems familiar. Exactly. I'm going to make you explore a. Ukronia, and you'll have to find pieces of your memory. Ukronia. N. N, right? U was A N, I think. Even for I'm not good with learning theory, but well, you know. I think it was that. You must be familiar with the concept of an utopia. A place that does not exist. As for me, I let people travel through times that do not exist. Temporal utopias. I had the occasion to visit in the past. What? Visits? Wait, what do you mean by Trump? Wait, wait, I skip the text again? No. See, right now I'm also trying to check something. Uh, uh, okay, so I was. I was right. And before you, but you know, there might be some. some words that won't work with this. So basically an abbreviation here. So maybe maybe the word is an abbreviation. I don't know. Okay. Uh, wait, what do you mean by travel? I thought there was nothing else beyond the mirror. Hmm, I'm not fond of getting to the because it's rather hard to swallow. But let's say I have the huge privilege of being the only one able to leave the village. Say what? What do you mean? So, there is some sort of exit to this place somewhere. Not really. Well, it's hard to explain. Do you really wish to know? Of course I do. Thank you, because you don't even need to ask me for my decision here. I would say the same thing. Basically, I'm able to travel from one world to another. They are all closed spaces, but I can walk between worlds to my way. To find my way. I can be seen by the inhabitants of those other worlds, but I can watch many things. Jealous of that. That's why I'm able to take you with me in uh, Ukronia, and why I'm a respected member of the village. Nobody else is able to do this. Hmm. Wait, you want me to witness past events? You've already seen yourself. How is that even possible? Yes and no. Like I said, these are Ukronias, temporal utopias. Time works differently there. I can go back to the creation of a world if so I if I so desire. I want to see that. Okay, I are you the only one able to travel? Well Please look uncomfortable. She look at deep breath and shoot a profoundly gentle look at me. Well, shadows are not really people to begin with, and the things you see in your dreams are not really from your past life. In fact, we are ideas, all of us. Our dreams are our concepts. 
but the concept is a shifting thing, so it's quite normal to be put to sleep and come back to life as a new variation of that concept. The thing is, nobody here realizes it, or rather, nobody wants to admit it, because if there is an idea, then there is someone who thought of that idea, and being the toy of some unseen being is not pleasant. I'm the only one here who accepted myself as an incomplete idea and embraced my true essence. That's all. Ideas. But ideas can feel and think. That's ridiculous. We have to be human. See, I knew you would admit it me. Uh, still, that is the truth. This place does have a name. The Ideas Graveyard. Nice name. You and I are both incomplete characters in a story that has never been told. That's why we are doomed to be born again and again, hoping to achieve our final form and obtain the acceptance of our maker. Hmm. Interesting, very interesting. That's preposterous. You know what? Forget it. You have to be a human being. I was only joking. <laughs> that was so funny. I knew it. That was one weird metaphysical rumble you went on. It would make a lick of sense. Hmm. I kind of believe it. Anyway. So, how do you manage to travel from one world to another? With magic. I'm a witch. Voila. There. Nothing more to know about me. We can learn how to use magic? No, you can't. Only I am to do it because I'm special. I'm the chosen one. Oh. I see. I get it. You should have told me this sooner instead of rambling. I hate you all so much sometimes. Uh. Oh, I actually messed up. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, and I go one, 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 three, five. Okay, never mind. Could tell me more about Ukronia. Could you tell me more about what happens next. probably will be able to return to the other question here, right? But if we weren't able to... You know what? I think I want the basic knowledge about everything. And not about the future, maybe. Yeah. Like I said earlier, Ukrainians can be defined as events, most often paradoxical ones, lost in time. I especially focus on fairy tales, not only because they are well suited for the exercise, but because everyone thinks they already know about them. Which means... You probably think you know everything about the original fairy tales, right? However, there are dozens and dozens of versions for each story, and they all come from various lands, in the same country. Sometimes, this story can unfold in an entirely different way. You think about it. How can you tell what is wrong and what is right? I've got the answer. Really? Today I'm going to show you the truth behind the fairy tale you must have heard about. I'm going to show you what really happened. Okay, I'm ready, I think. And you'll realize that different versions of this story do not necessarily contradict each other. It's actually quite the contrary. They are all true at the same time. Hmm. I'm not sure I understand what truth there is in fairy tales. You'll understand when we'll get there. Trust me. Okay. Could you tell me more about what happens next? Your secret is kind. I like that. Well, I am. And I'm glad I can come back to the question. But even if I wasn't, there is no skip button. <laughs> And that's good. Uh, to be honest, I'd rather have active and keen companions, ready to face up to any challenge. It's all better than having lazy ones who just follow you without ever saying a word. Hasty thinking every step. Uh, every step. Oh. Well. I mean. I would like to know everything. But. At the same time, I'm the lazy one. And I would follow, probably, with not saying a lot, at least, because I'm more of an observer, and you know, I kind of don't like asking questions. 
weird thing, right? I like to kind of gain knowledge by myself and so on. And also that leads to learning on mistakes. Uh, okay, but uh, let's go with the story. Damn it, why do I keep stopping? I hope this means you're in the former category. Well, anyway, we're both going to the purification hall and I'll perform a ritual to take your soul with me. Without your body, you'll just be a drifting perspective, a mere spectator. I'll let you witness the witness witness the events of this story without intervening. The rest will be up to you. Watch the detector on the right to spot fragments. Okay. With your insight and some clues hidden in the story to guide you, you'll have to spot which key events are tied to your past life. The closer you get to it, the redder your intuition should become. Okay. Red color means good. Probably. I mean, mean that it is. Uh, it is, you know, connected to us. It doesn't need to mean it's good. <laughs> but yeah. That's all? Okay, this event will be symbolized by an item you will have to find. Each item will be tied to a piece of your memory. Collected fragments will be in your inventory. Okay, the more you have, the more chances you will get to resolve the puzzle. Oh my god, the puzzle! Okay, I can do it. And remember who you were. You will have to be quick not to miss them. Puzzle, notice red color, remember who you were, and we have to be quick, got it. I think we're done with the questions, are you satisfied with my answers? I think so, it's quite hard to determine what I could ask since this whole world is a mystery in itself. You've probably already thought about everything I could think of, and I bet you'd like to know the answers as much as I do. Can't you ask basically tell me everything about this world? That would take a while, that would take a while for sure. But maybe it would be helpful as well. Indeed. As you may have noticed, for one eventually gets used to living in purgatory. That does not mean we have no interest in learning more when possible. Anyway, I think you're ready and we don't have any time to waste. Follow me to the temple. We'll perform the ritual right away. With a lovely smile on her face. Okay, now I can tell you she's smiling. Liz stretched a hand towards me and I took it. For I didn't understand everything about the purgatory I was in. I felt like I had nothing to lose by following her. Yeah. With an anxious heart I went to the temple to look for my past. Hmm. 